Travelling through the West in the 1860s, Mark Twain wrote of Salt Lake City being like a child's toy village, reposing under the majestic protection of the mountains surrounding it. By now, the village has grown, sprawled outwards to fill the whole of the valley that it occupies. It is the home of some 1.2 million residents, around half of them belonging to the Mormon faith. It is also the home of the National Security Agency's all-seeing eye. They call it the Intelligence Community Comprehensive National Cyber Security Initiative Data Centre, a data warehouse where they store all of the online information that they have collected on all of us. I have come to Utah because I want to see the centre. Its entire existence is opaque, uncertain. The American government acknowledges that it is there, but not what goes on inside its walls. It sits on public land, yet is fenced off, forbidden. All I want to do is lay eyes on it, nothing more. Wary of drawing too much attention to myself, I drive up into the mountains to find a perch and survey the valley. Much of the Salt Lake Valley is overlaid with a uniform grey grid. The city was planned according to religious tenets, the grid called the Platte of Zion, agreed as the model long before the Mormons arrived in Utah. At the centre of the city is Temple Square, the central point of global Mormonism. The streets of the city emanate from this square, each designed to orient the faithful towards the temple. But as you wander further away, out south, the old order begins to deteriorate, the strict grid breaking down. As I move lower down into the valley, dried brush gives way to concrete, and I find myself amongst malls and suburban cul-de-sacs. From a children's playground in one of these cul-de-sacs, I finally see the data centre on the other side of I-15. Thousands of cars must pass it every hour and never notice the low, boring grey slabs of concrete set into the hill. I am disappointed. Near where I am shooting, I find this building. To me, this is how a global spy centre should look. I briefly consider pretending that this, in fact, is the NSA data centre in Utah, but then think better of it. Slightly emboldened, I decide to cross the interstate to get a closer look. I find another suburban housing estate, the streets again deserted, and I park on a track above the houses, which gives me a perfect view of the centre. Seeing it close, like this, only reinforces the fact that this is a building designed to be as bland as possible. I get my shot, pack up, and think about what to do next. The moment that the camera is sealed inside the boot, a police car pulls up. I'm interrogated, but gently. I give the policeman my credentials, and he runs a background check. Everything is in order, and so the policeman drives away. To me, this seems like tacit permission. So I head down among the houses. I want to know how people feel about living in this building's shadow. I am met with a reluctance. No one wants to speak to me. And when pressed, they simply express indifference. Yes, they know what's housed inside the building. 
No, they don't care. I get the feeling that I am the intrusive one, the infringer of privacy. Defeated, I return to my car. And once again, the moment that the camera is shut away, the police appear. There have been calls made, concerns expressed. The officer speaks in the same strained, polite register used by the residents that did not want to be interviewed. I am asked if I need to do any more shooting. It is implied that maybe I have enough material by now to get my film made. I am a coward. The sun is hot and I am tired. So I leave for my hotel. That evening, I go and meet a writer who has lived in Salt Lake City for most of his life. He tells me that the government decided to locate the NSA centre here because the Mormons are obedient and they love secrecy. I mull this over on my journey home. He may well be right, but I wonder, are the rest of us any different?